we went together for Mother's Day. So all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. We went together for Pentecost. So send down your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. We went together for Father's Day. So fathers, happy Father's Day. We went together on Juneteenth. Let freedom ring today. Here we are assembled together. Amen. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good to see you. Let's go ahead and give a honk for the Lord. Go ahead and honk, amen. Give God praise today. <laughs> Welcome this morning and happy Sunday, happy Sabbath day to everybody. And let's start by giving God a hand clap of praise wherever you may be right now. Just take a moment just to give God thanks and praise to uh, release any fear, any anxiety, uh, any of the worries, the cares and concerns that you've been carrying throughout this week because we are gathered here to worship the Lord to put our faith, trust, and confidence in God, what God can do, even in the midst of a difficult moment like we find ourselves in. In fact, this was circling on Facebook. If you can show this meme, if, if 2020 was a movie picture, this would be the scene of 2020. Uh, that, of course, is from the movie Jaws. Uh, so perhaps you feel that way I do at times. It seems to be uh, almost unending nightmare uh, that happens around us with the news that's being reported. But again, we are being reassured today. We don't knock out, we don't black out, if you will, what's happening in the world, but we also tune into God to keep that proper balance and to keep that understanding of faith that God is with us. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're taking a moment today to take care of yourself. And so we've made it to a new month. It is now August, August the 2nd, 2020. And I want to begin by reminding ourselves and everyone of just who we are here at Journey of Faith. So please look at me please, with the slide that speaks about our marks of discipleship. We are not a membership-based church. We're a discipleship-based church. I mean, we're called to make disciples. And how do you and I live as disciples today? Well, we pray daily, worship weekly, read the Bible daily, work for peace and justice, serve at Journey of Faith and beyond, build authentic friendships, and are generous in our giving. Those are the tangible ways, the real ways that you and I can live as followers of Jesus in this time right now. Now, please also allow me to offer to our words of invitation that are based upon the core values that are what guide us here in our decision-making and how we live out the gospel at Journey of Faith. So again, please look at the screen with me. We are a community of faith anchored in the love of God, expressed through Jesus Christ. We are Christ-centered disciples who are loving and grace-filled, inclusive like Christ, community-focused, generous, advocates for justice, transformative. You are invited to be you and live in the grace and love of Jesus. So indeed, you are invited to be you. God made you to be the best version of you that you can be. And so I'm glad you are here. Please now join me for a moment of prayer as we pray together. And I invite you just to take a moment to breathe and just to be, to center yourself. Let us center ourselves in God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit right now. And let us speak to God and listen for what God has to say. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. And we ask and pray, Lord, for you to reveal to us your presence, to show to us the ways you are moving in our lives and in your creation. 
Lord, today we have gathered that we might experience your grace, your love beyond measure. Lord, just bless us this time we have with you and each other. And this and everything we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So for our sponsor reading today, I want to call upon Miss McKenna Hill, who is a young disciple here at Journey Faith. So McKenna, please lead us now in our responsive reading. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. God forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. God redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with the steadfast love and mercy. The Lord works liberation and justice for all who are impressed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Thank you, McKenna, for taking the time to lead us in a responsive reading. And now we're going to call upon my wife, Michelle, for the reading of today's scripture lesson, which comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 3. Good morning. Today's scripture lesson is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. Jesus was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him, how to destroy Jesus. Here is the reading of the scripture lesson. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. So we had uh, McKenna solo doing the sponsor reading and Michelle solo doing the scripture reading. And now we're going to bring the two together with their beautiful angelic voices. Uh, we're going to invite McKenna and Michelle now to lead us in one of my favorite songs, my jam of Let It Rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. So McKenna and Michelle, lead us in our song, but you at home, please also join in the praise.
I hope you enjoyed the song, Let the Glories of the Lord Rise Among Us. My wife has asked me two requests over the years is to not sing in public and to not dance in public. Uh, but that is, again, my jam. Let the glories of the Lord rise among us. But I don't want to chase you away. I want you to stay with me today. But thank you, McKenna and Michelle, for leading us. And I hope you took time to praise. I hope you took time to lift your voice and to offer God the deepest sense of gratitude and thanks for this day which we have together. For we are united in our worship. We are brought together as one body in this moment. Although we are not together physically, you are there and I'm here. But nonetheless, through that praise, through God's spirit, we are made one. And once again, I want to reiterate to you this morning that I am so glad that you are here with me today. I'm so glad you're taking time to take care of yourself. That is what Sabbath day is for. It is this day of rest. It's a day for us to continually be replenished and restored. You have to take time to love yourself. During this pandemic, during this time in our history as a country, you must take time to love yourself. If you don't have self-love, you cannot love others. If you don't have love within you, how can you share? You can't give what you don't have. You can't teach about what you don't know. And so we gather today to experience God's love so that we may continue to love one another. For indeed, it is in that love that God is made known, that God is present. So you, I'm glad you're here. And I hope this message today is one that touches your heart and encourages your spirit. And I oscillated. I went back and forth between two different sermon titles today. I don't know if the titles really matter. It's more the content of what I say. But I thought about two titles for today. The first one is, They Can't Stop Me. The second one is, Getting Into Good Trouble. Uh, so I think either one will apply uh, to the words which I want to share with you this morning. We are continuing in Mark. Uh, the Gospel of Mark that has been written is one that spoke in ages past and is still relevant for us today. I'll remind you what I've said prior to this moment, how scholars, biblical scholars, believe that Mark, of course, is the oldest of the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark was written first. And Mark was particularly written to followers of Jesus who were living in Rome, who had found themselves into the heart and soul of the Roman Empire. And it was there in Rome where the disciples of Jesus, the followers of Jesus, were themselves going through a time of great chaos and uncertainty. Mark was writing to a people who, just like you and I today, were wading through troubling waters. They were folks who, at that time, were traveling through some tough times. They were riding some rough roads. So the words that were applicable at that time are still applicable today. And Mark was sharing with them these stories of faith, these stories of healing, so that they might be healed. And they're shared with us today so you and I might be healed as well. Remember the followers of Jesus who were in Rome about uh, the year 70 to 75, 65 to 75 A.D., we're living at a time of great chaos and uncertainty caused by the ravenous rule of Emperor Nero. Nero had unleashed Rome's federal agents to arrest, detain, torture, and eventually to kill followers of Jesus. You see, Nero believed that Christian lives don't matter, and he used every means necessary to scare the Roman populace to fear and be threatened by the presence of Christians in their neighborhoods, in their schools, or in their places of work. So Mark is writing to those folks, those folks who again, to remind them as we are reminded today, that trouble don't last always. To remind them for Mark to join with the voice of Maya Angelou, who had shared with us that every storm runs out of rain or perhaps to join in the chorus that Mary Gehagen, my own grandmother, shared with Marx, the gospel writer, when my grandmother would tell me, this too shall pass. 
Those are the words of Mark written for us to hear on this day. Mark's stories are written that you and I might remain faithful, might remain hopeful, and might remain powerful in our lives. No matter, no matter what tweet the tweeter in chief might tweet, no matter what cockamamie propaganda is being proposed to gain traction amongst us, no matter every insensitive policy or procedure that pours rubbing alcohol on the festering wound caused by racism and white supremacy. Jesus is going to get into some good trouble for us then and remain with us in this time now. So Mark chapter 3, today's lesson, begins with this word, again. Again, Jesus. Again, Jesus is in the synagogue. Again, Jesus is in the church. Now that word again is meant to demonstrate that there is a repeating action, that there is returning to a previous condition, that something that occurred before is now occurring again. Uh, perhaps you have thought to yourself, oh Lord, here we go again. Or simply, oh, not again. Well, again, Jesus entered the synagogue because Jesus made worship. Jesus made a moment on the Sabbath. Jesus made a moment of time to practice his faith life in a moment of worship and praise again. And that's why this is a key moment for us and our relationship with God. Again, again for us to take this time, again for us to gather together through the means of online work, of social media, again for us to gather, to make time to praise and worship and making that part of your life as I do my life. Whether it's in drive-in worship or online worship, again we take time to give God thanks and praise. It's not that God needs our praise. God desires our praise, but we need to praise because praise releases again that which we've carried. Praise is a statement of faith that God, all things are in your hands. And so indeed praise is that moment that you and I share together right now that Jesus did. And you better believe if Jesus, son of God, need to praise, Lord have mercy, you know I better praise. You know, I need it for my life as well. So I'm wondering today, as Jesus formed this, what I would like to call a habit. I'm wondering today, what are some of the new habits uh, that you have formed during this time of this pandemic? I'm sure we have a whole bunch of new habits that we didn't have before. I know I have the habit of dressing down for work. I can't go anywhere. I can't visit anybody. There's no meetings to go to. It's all Zoom all online. So I've been wearing t-shirts and shorts, which by the way, I love to do. What are new habits that you have formed in this time? Habits don't take long to grab hold of us, and habits are things that we do repeatedly, repetitively, and it also then becomes a part of how we operate, a part of how we think, a part of the way that our brain functions. And there are, of course, good habits, and then there are what? Bad habits as well. So what are some of the habits that you have that are new to you? What are some habits that have formed during the times, these months, that we have been going through this pandemic that might be lasting beyond the time when we get through this? In some ways, I miss our old habits. I miss some of our old ways of being and living, particularly the freedom of travel and the ability to go to places, uh, for me, restaurants or even bars and the like, to be out in public. But these habits come along, and as you know, habits are hard to break, but they're not too difficult to form. My children, uh, to help them get out and play, to help them get some time and recreation, Michelle and I bought them rollerblades. Now, Zania is a roller skater learning to ice skate. Zach's an ice skater who learned how to roller skate, and so we got them rollerblades. But it's amazing how that was something new to them. 
Uh, it wasn't quite the same, similar of course, but not the same as roller skating, ice skating. And so I watched them when they first had their roller blades on, how tentative they were, how much they had to think about what they were doing and the balancing, and particularly how to stop with the roller blades. It takes the back of the blade and not the front as you would with a roller skate or on the side as you would with ice skates. But they were so tentative, they weren't unsure, they hadn't yet learned it, but after they kept doing it and repeating and repeating and skating and skating and rollerblading, rollerblading, suddenly now they do it with ease. They don't even think about it anymore because now their brain functions this way. They know how to respond and how to do this, and the same is true for us and everything. So they had to intentionally teach themselves how to, but once they've intensely taught themselves, there's no thought to it. It becomes a regular practice. It becomes a habit. It becomes you do it again and again and again, just like Jesus. And so I hope that what you will do is find a way to cultivate those good habits during this time. And especially do this today. Do this as a habit in your life. Do this as a moment to gather, to again give God praise, to tune in and hear what God has for you and what God is saying to you and join together just like Jesus did as he was once again in the synagogue, again for a moment for you to develop a way to care for your soul, to care for yourself at this time. But hold on, stop the press. Jesus is the only one there that day. Mark also tells us someone else was in that moment. Jesus was again in the synagogue, and then Mark goes on to tell us, but also with him in the Lord's house that day, there was a man there with a withered hand. A man there who had a hand that was wrinkled, a hand that was crinkled, a hand that didn't work as it was supposed to work. And what I love about this is that in the house of the Lord that day with Jesus is this man with a withered hand, as if to say to you and I, do not let your situations keep you from worshiping the Lord your God. Do not let your circumstances in your life keep you from communicating with the Lord of your life, the creator of your life, the offer of abundant life that Jesus gives to you and me. See, every one of us, everyone, you, me, the people around you, those who you know, guess what? We all got problems. We all have problems in life. And one of the habits we've cultivated in church is to somehow hide our hurts. We've learned very well to bury our blemishes. We've learned to put aside our pain. Conceal, don't feel. That's the first time I ever quoted Elsa from Frozen in a sermon. And we've learned to do that. In fact, even before we had the mandate to wear a mask, and by the way, this mask can protect your life this mask can save your life. We've been wearing masks in church for a mighty long time. Invisible masks, masks that hide ourselves, that somehow hide our true selves. But yet we're called to be our authentic selves, to be you. No matter what it is that you're battling or going through, to be in the presence of the Lord, because God is looking for you. God is calling for you. God is wanting, desiring for you to be in relationship with God. You know, again, the, the mask in church, it, it's stunning to me. Some years ago, there was a very prominent preacher, and I, I don't like to name, call people out by name, because we all got some stuff. Like I said, we all got problems, we all got issues. So this one prominent preacher of a mega church, some years ago, I mean, he was a strapping guy, muscular, big, handsome, and he used his charisma to build a, a mighty big church. And he got cancer. And he lost weight. I mean, he lost massive weight. 100 pounds. May have been 150 pounds. He was skin and bones. And he made a video that told his precious and told people, I'm not sick. In fact, he went out to tell him I'm on a vegan diet. I'm just eating raw vegetables. That's why I've lost so much weight. And weeks before he died, he went before his church, his congregation, and he had an opportunity. He had an opportunity to just be himself. He had an opportunity to share with them, you know what? I got cancer. I'm dying. 
but he couldn't do that because he proclaimed the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel is all about image. The prosperity gospel is about how you look, putting that out before who you actually are at times. And what's tragic, he died weeks later from cancer. So we have been taught this. We put on this show sometimes. We put on a front instead of just being who we are. And so Jesus took on our humanity. Jesus became flesh. The word became flesh. Jesus took on our humanity so God can join us in our humanity. So God could join us in our brokenness. But somehow we want to act like we're not human, that we're above our own humanity. And God doesn't ask, ask us for that. But God asks us to trust us in our brokenness, to open ourselves up for the possibility of God creating that space where God could be. So it wasn't though just Jesus and the man with a traumatized hand either. Here's the last thing that Mark adds I want to share with you today. Mark also says to us that they are there. They are there. They were there watching. They were there waiting. They were there hoping that Jesus would trip up, that they could get him. They could catch him for breaking their protocol and what they taught and believed and practiced in their church. They were there because they always want to try to mess things up. They aren't happy. They can be mad at you. You know, they can be funny sometimes. Sometimes they can have your back. The next time they can stab you in the back or talk about you behind your back. They. It's always they. And one of the dangers, of course, is that we don't become they. Because, see, they somehow think it's us versus they versus them. They think that they're better. They think they are superior. They are self-righteous. They reject God's vision, God's understanding that we're all created in the image of God. They don't adhere to Jesus' teaching to make disciples of all nations, of all people, regardless of skin color, regardless of sex, gender, sexuality, income, stat economic status, or whatever it may be. They don't believe in that. They don't believe even in this own nation, the teaching that we, the people, because they don't want to treat everybody as we, because they are they. They reject the notion that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. They are claiming that mail-in voting, and which is the same thing as absentee ballots, is unsafe and deceptive. They are appealing to the lesser demons of our own nature, recalling racist ways, both past and present, by using code language of law and order, or order and also speaking of suburban nights, watching out for those in low-income people coming to your neighborhood. And again, I have to caution us to, that we don't become like they that we don't buy into the idea that they have. And so Jesus encountered they that day in the church. They were there. They were there to catch him in that moment. Jesus, the man with the jacked up hand, encountered they. And that moment, they were the praise police. They were the ritual regulators. And they were the Sabbath day security squad who is going to make sure they abide it again by all of their own rituals, their religion, and their rules. Because what they had ingrained in them, as I share with you at that time, at the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, what they taught with their rituals, with their religion, with their rules, is that anyone that had a physical abnormality was a sign of a spiritual abomination that that person was. That in other words, any sign, uh, a sign of defect or a sign of some way that you are ill or not normal or not where you should be as they determined is a sign of God's punishment upon you. 
That was their teaching and thinking at their time. They believed that how you looked on the outside was reflective of who you were on the inside. But see, that's what Jesus comes in to show us. That you might be as smooth as silk. You might be as fine as wine. You might be as cute as a button. But you could still be rotten on the inside. And you could live in the hood. You could shop at Goodwill. You could walk with a limp. You could talk with a lisp. You could battle a mental illness. You could fight an addiction. You could not have a pot to praise the Lord in, but you could still be significantly sweet on the inside and walk with Jesus. So Jesus is saying to them today, which I hope we hear today, that I am not stuck, Jesus says, on your rituals, your religion, or your rules. But Jesus says, I'm all about your relationships of how you treat one another, of how you look out for those who are disadvantaged, how you help those who are in need. Jesus concerned about relationships when he said that at the heart of all things is to love the Lord your God, though your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Where Jesus said, do unto others as you would what? Have them do unto you. So, yeah, the people at the church that day, they might have had their clothes pressed and ironed and the man had a wrinkly hand. But I love the fact that he's there that day. I love the fact that he knows what they are saying about him. But he says to them, you know what? I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you know about me. But I'm going to keep worshiping the Lord my God. I'm going to worship the one who knows all about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But guess what? Loves me still. Because no matter what we've done or where we've been or what we're going through, just know this. God still cares for you. Know this, that God still loves you. That God still provides for you. That God grace covers all of us in every way. So Jesus sees the man with the withered hand and tells him what? Stretch out. Just a couple weeks ago, Jesus himself stretched his hand out to heal the leper. Now he says to this man, stretch out. Stretch out from your illness into a place of healing. Stretch out from where you have been to where God is leading you to go. Stretch out above and beyond this moment in time to stretch out to where God's grace and love is for you. Now again, they wanted to build a wall to divide and keep out, but not Jesus. Jesus makes a bridge because Jesus loves to get into some good trouble, which I'll close with today. The images this past week have just in so many ways been so remind, mindful of where God has brought us to. Remindful of all those who sacrificed in the past and struggled in the past and the progress that has been made. Now we've got a ways to go. This past week when we laid to rest, represent John Lewis, there are some powerful images and, and words and lessons for us to all draw upon. We celebrate the life of this congressman who served his own district for so many terms. John Lewis was the third of 10 children born to his mom and dad in rural Alabama. And of course, it was John Lewis who joined forces with Dr. King through his own initiative, a SNCC, to help increase, to give access to voting rights for African Americans in the South. And it was indeed John Lewis, who was an architect of a bridge to a brighter future, a better tomorrow. But speaking of a bridge, it was on March the 7th, 1965, when John Lewis joined together with about 600 protesters to have a voting rights march from Selma, Alabama. And right outside Selma is the Edmund H. Pettus Bridge 
And that day, as John Lewis led this group across the bridge, that Sunday became known in history as Bloody Sunday, known for the fact that in that moment in time, Alabama state troopers had gathered to mercilessly beat the protesters that day. John Lewis himself, in his early 20s, had his skull fractured. Uh, he was beaten unconscious. In fact, one of the things he shared from that moment is the words that I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death. And of course, that day, the Edmund H. Pettus Bridge was a bridge that was colored red by the blood of those who sacrificed so much and walked to try to walk across that bridge. Well, if you were watching this past Sunday, last Sunday, July 26, an incredible moment in history and time where Representative Lewis's body was carried across that same bridge, carried across on a horse drawn carriage, carried across with an American flag draped across his coffin. It was an amazing moment to see that in that moment, all these years later, that there was John Lewis, who before the Alabama State Troopers were there to stop him, but this day they were there to escort him. How back that day, 55 years ago, the bridge was colored red from the blood that was shed. But on this day, the bridge was colored red from rose petals that were put down. And what an incredible moment for us all to see. A reminder again that that body that was broken on that Sunday before, on this Sunday, July 26, that same body was being led across the bridge into a place of peace and power. That same body of Representative Lewis that had been beaten now is also now being celebrated for all that he has done and all he's given to us. And please don't forget today that Congressman Lewis was a follower of Jesus, that he himself believed love was the bridge, that love was the way that we're all called to walk. And that's today what I hope we all see for ourselves, that Jesus came to be that bridge, that bridge to reach out to, that bridge to bring in, that bridge to restore and bring healing, just as Jesus did to that, the man with the withered hand that day. And I hope and pray that we as a nation can get past just symbolic gestures like we see with Represent Lewis to real systemic structural change, that we together can see that they will not win, that they will lose, that their days are numbered in this regard because love does win, justice does prevail, and Jesus shows us the way that Jesus' will and way will be made known through us as his followers. So let us all today work for that healing, that restoration that Jesus brings to us. Don't worry about they. They can't stop you. They can't stop me. Let us not become they, but let us see each other as children of God, as siblings of Jesus, and work together to share the love of Christ throughout the world. Amen. So thank you uh, for that moment we had together. I hope and pray that my words to you uh, have encouraged you as they encourage me. You know, I want to say that everything I preach, every word that comes from my mouth is well thought, uh, has been prayed for and given to me. And I just have to preach what's in here for me to you. Uh, but I always hope and pray that in some way you find a sense of peace and power to act and to live as God called you to live. And so that being said, I wish upon you today, I want to offer to you today the presence of God through peace and power. And so may the peace and power of the Lord be with you and share that peace and power with all who you meet today. So what is going on? Well, not much right now. We're kind of slowing down for the summer. I'm going to actually be taking a little time off myself. 
uh, to be restored and rejuvenated. I hope you take time for you. So next Sunday, there'll be no drive-in worship. Uh, we're just going to be here, online worship. So 1030 Sunday, I'll be here uh, at that time, uh, but no drive-in worship. And also this coming week, there won't be any Facebook Live or Bible study. Again, we're taking a pause from all that. Uh, so I invite you, though, to still stay grounded in God's words, still take time to pray, and uh, still nurture your soul. Uh, but I won't see you again until next Sunday right here with our online worship. Also, though, I want to definitely encourage you, as I did this today, in fact, um, I want you to register to vote if you haven't yet, and also to register to get a mail-in ballot. Uh, mail-in voting, again, is safe. Mail-in voting, absentee ballots are the same thing, okay? So all the rhetoric out there that's being said, don't believe the hype. But please, practice your right to vote. Let your voice be heard. And so you're going to see on, on right here on this uh, slide, you'll see a website to go to. Uh, you can uh, copy that in. Uh, but it's basically the state of Maryland's voter services, the elections page and follow directions. It takes about five minutes and you'll get your mail-in ballot. You can turn it in at a precinct at the time of the election or you can mail it in. But I encourage you, you know, get ready. Let's uh, get ready to vote less than 100 days to election day. And it's a critical, sacred right that a person like John Lewis fought for, that we all could vote and have our voice heard. So I please encourage you to be sure you get ready to vote. So update on our giving. Well, Lord have mercy. As of yesterday, August the 1st, we have, we are $3,999 above our goal. $3,999. So if someone can send us $1, so we can get to $4,000. It just looks odd, right? We could have rounded up, but it's kind of fun to look at. But thank you, everybody, for what you give. Uh, I don't believe ever uh, in my time with you at Journey of Faith. We've been in August and still ahead. And that is, again, is a sign of your generosity. It's a sign of your love and faith for God, because that's why we give. We don't give to get rich. I'm not here to swindle you out of money God's given to you, the resources God bless you with. I'm here to invite you, I invite you to give as God's given to you, I invite you to bless as God has blessed you. And we at Journey of Faith look for ways that we can be a blessing to others as well. So again, thank you, everybody, and all that you give. But let us close our time out together with a closing prayer today, a time to sit, to stand, to be in God's presence and speak to God and listen to God to the gift of prayer given to us through the Holy Spirit. So please, would you pray with me now? Lord God, once again, we are thankful that we are reminded that you love us just the way we are, that you love us for who we are today, and Lord, we also are reminded that you love us so much, you won't leave us the way we are. But Lord, you continue to heal us. You continue to strengthen us. You continue, Lord, to restore us each and every day. So help us, Lord, to continue to practice self-love. Help us to love ourselves. Help us to love our neighbor, to love our family, to love those around us. And let us do so in a way of expressing and showing our love for you. Lord, we continue to pray for our nation right now. We pray uh, for the divisiveness uh, that we are experiencing, for the lies being told, for the misinformation that's being shared uh, to be done away with, for us to turn to you, to seek guidance for unity, to seek uh, togetherness, to seek truth and understanding, to trust science, the gift you've given to us. Help us, especially this time, this pandemic, Lord, be with those who experience so much loss at this time, the loss of loved ones, or those who experience the loss of life itself, and strengthen those who are in the healthcare profession, and be with those, Lord, who are studying, working for a vaccine. But Lord, grant to us compassion, please, to wear a mask and to love each other, and grant to us understanding and wisdom to know how to keep ourselves safe and one another safe at this time. Can you pray for the state of Maryland, for our community, for all of our leaders? And we also pray for Journey of Faith. We're thankful for this church home, this place to go to be ourselves, to know that we are welcome, no exceptions, all are welcome here. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. And so we ask for healing in those places. Heal us in mind, body, and soul right now. 
Lord, we ask and pray that you be with those who are in need of a double portion of your spirit today. As we take time to name out loud or silently in the secret parts of our heart those we know are in need of your spirit today. We continue to pray for the Scott family, for Megan and Nettie and Nathan. We pray for Helen, for Harry, for Roger and Karen, for Cheryl, for Mark Vernick, Robert and Deborah, for Earl Lockett, for Andrea, for Evelyn, for Michelle. And Lord God, for everyone and everything we pray, we pray, Lord, trusting in you, placing all things in your hands. For to the name of every name, the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray today, with you and the Holy Spirit, you live as one God now and forever. And together let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Meaning it is so. So, beloved, let us walk with faith. Let us live with courage. And let us be filled with compassion uh, through the week ahead. I offer you today this closing benediction, this closing blessing today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon favor and grant you today all power, all peace, all grace, and all love. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. God loves you. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Amen.